Hey everybody, Renaissance Coders here. My name is Darren, and today we're going to talk about session management. So this is something that is rarely talked about in game development, and that's one of the main reasons that I want to talk about it today. So first we're going to talk about what a session is, we'll talk about why it's so useful, and then of course I'll provide a couple of examples for you to use in your session controllers today. A session simply stores and manages information about what the player does in a particular session. We can define a session by the point in time where the game is open all the way to the point where the player is finished playing your game and then close it for the day. So this can be what the player does inside of the game, but it could also be a window into what the player does outside of the game. For instance, the session could keep track of how many rounds of gameplay the player has played since opening the game, but it could also keep track of how many times the player has closed and reopened the app within a single session. A session might be able to tell if the player has logged in yet, or if they've been idle for too long and how to handle that situation. So there are a lot of things that your session could do, but what do you ultimately decide to put in your session controller should fall into one of two categories. The first is that the data that you put in your session is meant to store information about how the player interacts with the game. The second category is that you know the data needs to be collected, but you're not sure if or when the data will be used during that particular session. So if the data that you store in your session falls into one of those two categories, then it's probably a good candidate for your session controller. So both of these categories have a common theme, and that is that there are a lot of unknowns between them. From game to game, the role of the session controller will be different based on the requirements that you want to implement, just like any other system. So now let's talk about why the session controller is such an important system for your games. The session acts as a source of truth in your game. When the player does something that you care about, the session should be aware of it. And by proxy, any system that needs that information can get it, and it will always be the same information for as long as that session lasts. Now where it gets tricky is thinking about just what it is that we want the session to store. So now let's talk about a couple of concrete examples that you can use today. So the first example is pretty simple. Simply wait for the player to open the app and then take note of the time. We can call this session start time. Why would this go into our session controller though? Well, it's generic enough to assume that multiple systems might need it, but it's also specific enough to be complete on its own. That means that nothing needs to modify it to make it whole. It simply is what it is, session start time. So you can see that when we configure the session controller, we start the session. Currently, all we do in start session is initialize session start time, which we get from the C-sharp class date time offset and then we convert that to a long by using the two unix time seconds function. A session start time might be useful to a daytime controller in your game, maybe to dictate when to start the day cycle. It could also be used to schedule notifications one day, one week, or one month after this session. So there are a couple of use cases for this already. What if we want to detect when the player leaves the game? In many cases, if the player leaves the game without closing the app, then we would want to pause the game. We can implement the Unity event function on application focus, which accepts a bool that tells us if the game is in focus or not. If the game loses focus, we may want to pause the game. And when the player returns and focus is true, we would tell the necessary components to resume. We can manage pausing a couple of ways. One way is to emit an event delegate, but as you may already know, events could be difficult to manage and debug. A better way would be to place all of the update responsibility in the hands of your session. So what if the only update loop in your game was on the session? And to take that idea further, what if all of the initialization of the game-related systems was taken care of in your session as well? In that case, you wouldn't need to worry about the game loop in your other classes. You could also easily control the order in which the game controllers are initialized and updated. And this would make it easy to manage your game. But to revisit the pause example, we can use a bool to track whether the game is paused or not, and then modify that bool in the onApplicationFocus function. When the focus is false, we want to set that bool to true. In that case, we choose not to update the game if pause is true. 
This ensures that when the player returns to the game, they have a chance to remember where they left off before continuing. So when focus is true, we could send a pop-up to let the player know that the game was paused and that they can continue. That window would be in charge of calling the session's public method for unpause. So what would this kind of behavior look like? Well, the first thing that we would want to do is add the using statement for Unity Core.menu because we're going to end up wanting to provide a pop-up to the player whenever the game is resumed. So we incorporate the menu system. We have a reference to our game controller now, and we have a Boolean to determine whether or not the game is paused. Now we use the Unity event function in our session controller on application focus, which accepts a Boolean called focus. We say if the game is in focus, then we go ahead and turn the page on for the pause pop-up. And the pause pop-up page is going to be responsible for calling unpause. And only at that time will the game be unpaused. So the user has plenty of time to understand that the game was paused before they actually start playing again. Now, if the application is not focused, then we set the pause boolean to true. In the update function, we check to see if the game is paused, and if it is, then we return. Otherwise, we update the game. We have a public function for initialize game, which the game is going to call to provide a reference of the game controller to the session. Here, we initialize the game variable just like this, and then we also initialize the content of the game by using the game's public function on init. Now, why is this valuable? Well, it's valuable because we have full control over the entire update cycle of the game with just these four lines of code. And when it comes to the game loop, this is the only place where the update function is called. From our game controller, we can order all of the system initialization inside of this function however we want, and we can order all of the, the game-related update functions inside of this function however we want. So we have full control over what gets updated and by which order. Finally, the last example that we'll talk about for the session would be debug and testing related work. We can say that if our debug bool is true, then we want to record information about the session and make it available for the developer. An easy example of this would be to track frames per second. In our update loop, we can calculate the current frame rate and store that in a float property for some display to use later. In addition, an FPS value could be used in-game to warn the player that their graphic settings may be too high for their device, along with other optimization tips. And this is what I mean when I say the session is great at storing information that can be used in a variety of different ways. So the way we might do this in our session controller is first start off by storing a float for FPS, make that publicly accessible with this property. And then in our update function, we can do this pretty simply in Unity by saying that the FPS is equal to time.framecount divided by time.time. .time. And this will give you an average frame rate. That's going to wrap up this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'm happy to say that there's some bonus content in the description. So you should definitely go ahead and check that out. Anyway, help us out by dropping a like and subscribing to the video. As always, thanks for watching.